Welcome to Everyday Nursing Knowledge Lectures and today we will learn about neurogenic shock. What is neurogenic shock? Shock means it's a decreased tissue perfusion that leads to hypoxia, decreased blood supply to the tissues that leads to low oxygen. And if shock happens due to injury to the nervous system, it is called neurogenic shock or shock due to the inability or loss of function of sympathetic nervous system to stimulate nerve impulse. What is sympathetic nervous system? The nervous system in our body is divided into central and peripheral. Central nervous system involves brain and spinal cord. The rest of the nervous system comes under peripheral. The peripheral is further divided into somatic and autonomic. Somatic nervous system and nervous system to the voluntary muscles, muscles that we can control or to the senses. Autonomic nervous system and nervous system to the involuntary muscle and to the internal organs. This autonomic is further divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic nervous system are involved in fight and flight response. It is involved when our body is in stress or when our body is in danger. Whereas parasympathetics are involved in rest and digestion. So parasympathetic does opposite to the sympathetic and these two creates a balancing act. So what are the causes? that leads to damage to the sympathetic nervous system when there is a spinal cord injury, especially about T6 because the sympathetic innervation of the heart arises from T1 to T5 or certain drugs that can affect the sympathetic nervous system or spinal anesthesia. This all can lead to neurogenic shock. What are the effects of sympathetic nervous system on heart and blood vessels? Our sympathetic nervous system are involved when our body is in stress or in danger. So due to the activation, you will see there's an increase in heart rate, the blood vessels constrict, our breathing increases, the muscles constrict, pupils dilate, so more vision or far vision improves, digestion is inhibited so that it can focus on the other important functions, the loss of bowel bladder control. And for this lecture, we are concentrating only on heart rate and blood vessels, which can lead to hemodynamic changes. The sympathetic nerves to the heart, it increases the myocardial contraction of the heart as a result, heart rate increases. Now the sympathetic nerves to the blood vessels, it releases the neurotransmitters, example, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and it constricts the blood vessels, it narrows the blood vessels. So what happens if there is a damage to the sympathetic nervous system? Now there is an opposed parasympathetic nervous system. As a result, the heart rate decreases and to the blood vessels, there is low release, there is decreased release of epi and or epi. As a result, blood vessels dilate or vasodilation happens. So how does it affect the blood pressure? Now blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into systemic vascular resistance. When the blood vessels dilate, the blood is flowing through a large vessel. As a result, there is low resistance to the blood flow. So systemic vascular resistance falls or decrease in the systemic vascular resistance that leads to low blood pressure. It also depends on the cardiac output. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped by the heart in one minute and it depends on the heart rate and stroke volume. Cardiac output is equal to heart rate and stroke volume. And due to the damage to the sympathetic nervous system, there is decrease in heart rate. So heart rate drops. What happened to the stroke volume? Stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped by the heart with each beat. So when there is vasodilation, blood pools in the extremities. As a result, venous return or blood return back to the heart or blood volume back to the heart decreases. As a result, stroke volume or the blood pumped by the heart with each beat decreases. So when there is damage to the sympathetic nervous system, the heart rate drops, stroke volume drops, as a result your cardiac output drops and because of vasodilation again systemic vascular resistance drops. As a result that leads to decrease or low blood pressure. Now let's see the signs and symptoms of neurogenic shock. The signs and symptoms are bradycardia or decreased heart rate and this is because of unopposed parasympathetic activity. And this is the only shock where you see bradycardio decrease heart rate. In other kinds of shock, in our body, heart rate increases to increase the blood pressure. Whereas in neurogenic shock, you will see a decreased heart rate or bradycardia because of the nervous system damage. Now the hypertension or low blood pressure, this is because of vasodilation. Hypothermia or decreased temperature due to the hypothalamic dysfunction. In addition to the hypothalamus dysfunction, there is peripheral pooling of blood. As a result, blood pools in the peripheries, low venous return or blood return back to the heart, it can also decrease the temperature. 
because of the pooling of the blood there is a risk for deep vein thrombosis warm dry extremities but the core temperature will be low or cold body now neurogenic shock is a form of distributive shock distributive shock means shock happens due to vasodilation the other kinds of distributive shock are septic shock and anaphylactic shock also neurogenic shock is different from spinal shock these both shock are different spinal shock happens due to the spinal cord injury and that leads to decreased reflexes loss of motor sensory function whereas in neurogenic shock it can lead to hemodynamic changes now what are the management of neurogenic shock you protect the spine if spinal cord injury is suspected log roll the patient when you turn when you transport Keep the cervical collar on if injury to the cervical spine is suspected. Atropin for bradycardia. Atropin blocks the parasympathetic effects on the heart. But if it is severe, temporary pacing may necessary. IV fluids to increase the blood pressure but use with caution because a neurogenic shock happens due to vasodilation and it has the normal blood volume. Vasopressors. It constricts the blood vessels as a result, systemic vascular resistance increases cardiac output increases and blood pressure increases. Example, levofed, epinephrine, neosinephrine. Positive inotropes, dopamine is used because it is, helps with the vasoconstriction and it increases the heart rate. So today we learned about neurogenic shock and thanks for watching my video.